this is an illustration of a galvanic or a voltaic cell. Now, to prepare a galvanic or voltaic cell, we take two beakers or two containers. I'm going to use beakers. Then we put water inside. And in the first one, we will add zinc nitrate to it and we stir it to get a one molar solution of zinc nitrate. Now, in my second beaker, I will add water to the beaker. I'll pour water into the beaker. Then I'll add copper nitrate. Then I'll stir to get one molar solution of copper nitrate. Now, these solutions become my electrolyte. Since this is a zinc nitrate solution, we are going to place a metal whose ions are found in this solution. When we break this zinc nitrate into solution, you are going to get zinc ions and nitrate ions. So we are going to place zinc metal here. Now zinc metal over here becomes an electrode. It becomes an electrode. Then over here in the copper nitrate solution, we place a copper metal in the solution. And the copper metal becomes an electrode. We connect what we call a salt bridge. The salt bridge is going to be the connection between these two compartments. We talk more about the salt bridge later on. We then connect a wire between the zinc electrode and the copper electrode. And when we connect the wire, we make sure we put a voltmeter here to indicate the flow of electrons and, and tell us the voltage over here in this whole carbonic cell. The moment you connect the wire, electrons begin to move from one of the compartments to another. Let's have a look at what really happens into detail. But before we look at what happened into details, this is the simple illustration of a galvanic cell. We have a container with our electrolytes, then an electrode, a metal that contains the same ions as there is in the electrolyte. And we do the same for the second container. Then we connect a salt bridge between the two compartments. We then connect a wire from the one, one of the electrodes to the other electrode. Then we place a voltmeter to measure the potential difference or the voltage. This is a simple diagram of how a galvanic or a voltaic cell looks like. Now let's go a little bit into details and see what really happens in the galvanic cell. Let's assume we have a microscope that can really see the atoms in the metals, that can really see the ions in the solution. Now when we use that microscope, these are what we are going to observe. In the first compartment, we have zinc ions, nitrate ions, all in solution. And that is what we call the electrolyte. This is zinc metal, and on the zinc metal, we have a lot of zinc atoms. So these atoms are found on the edge of the zinc metal. Over here in this compartment, we have our copper nitrate solution. When copper nitrate is added to water, it breaks into copper two ions and the nitrate ions. Now remember, the chemical formula for copper two nitrates is this. For every ion of copper two, we have two nitrate ions. And for every zinc two ion, we have two nitrate ions. So over here, if you look at the electrolyte over here, we have one, two, 
three, four, zinc, two ions. And each one has two nitrate ions with it. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nitrate ions. Meaning two of nit the nitrate ions go with one zinc two ion. Over there too, we have one, two, three, four copper two ions. The nitrate ions, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each copper two ion is going with two nitrate ions. Uh, we have to establish this fact that in the solution, we have more than four copper two ions. But for the sake of our explanation, I've just isolated only four of the copper two ions, which I want to talk about. And over here too, I've isolated only four of the zinc two plus ions, which I want to talk about. It will just help us understand what is really happening in the galvanic or the voltaic cell. So when we connect the wire, something begins to happen. Something is missing even from the diagram, that is the salt bridge. I've just left it out for a reason, but it's always supposed to be there. I'll talk about the functions and the roles the, the, the salt bridge is going to play later on. But for now, let's assume our salt bridge is there and the circuit is now complete. The moment we connect the wires between the two electrodes, the two electrodes are made up of metals. Here, zinc metal, here, copper metal. And we know that metals always want to lose electrons. But here, we have zinc, a metal, connected to copper, another metal. So who loses the electrons? It becomes a struggle. Zinc would like to lose, copper would like to lose. But I will spare you the details right now of what determines who is going to lose the electrons. We'll talk about that one in our next video. But for now, what we are saying is zinc will now have to lose the electrons. The reason I've said I will explain it all. Now zinc today will lose the electrons. Now when zinc loses two electrons, for example, this zinc atom will lose two electrons. So when it loses two electrons, it becomes zinc two plus. Zinc two plus is an ion, so it will join the solution. Then the two electrons, the two electrons will have to pass through this zinc metal, then through the wire over here to the other part of the voltage cell. That is the second compartment. Now, when it gets there, these are copper atoms. Copper atoms do not need these electrons. But inside here in the solution, we have copper two ions. A copper atom that has already lost two electrons. So that copper ion will now say that, hey, I need those two electrons. Then it will draw closer to these copper atoms in the metal. Now when this copper two ion draws closer here, this copper two ion will now come here to wait for those two electrons that are coming from zinc. So it will then accept those two electrons and now become a neutral copper atom. When it becomes a neutral copper atom, it has two options. Either to stick with these copper atoms in the metal or come and settle down in the solution as a copper metal. Remember, it's not a copper metal, so it is not going to dissolve in the solution. So over here, let me say, it has formed copper two metal, sorry, copper metal. It has formed copper metal and attaches itself to these copper atoms. It doesn't end there. So far as the voltage cell is in operation, another zinc metal atom will also lose two electrons and also become zinc two ions. 
which is soluble in the solution. Now, those two electrons will pass through the wire and come to this second compartment. This copper two ions will say, hey, I also need the two electrons so that I can become a copper metal or a copper atom. So this one too will draw close here. Then it will accept the two electrons. Then it will also become a copper atom. It could either join these copper atoms or settle down in the beaker. Let's go one more time. Another zinc atom over here will lose two electrons and then become zinc two plus. Then the two electrons will pass through the wire and get into the second compartment. When it gets the second compartment, another copper two ion will say, I also need the electrons. It will come closer to these ones and accept those two electrons and become a neutral copper atom. So what is really happening? What is really happening? Zinc atom is losing two electrons. So zinc atom, which is solid and a metal, loses two electrons. Now when it loses the two electrons, it becomes zinc two plus ions. And these are ions, so they are soluble in the solution over here. They are soluble in water. So in time, what will happen is this zinc metal will shrink or it will reduce in size. As you can see over here, you see all this part of the zinc is gone. And if this cell continues operating, most of the atoms of zinc will join the solution as zinc ions. And the zinc ions will dissolve in the solution the zinc metal will reduce in size. At the second compartment, we have copper two ions in the solution. When zinc loses the two electrons, these copper two ions will gain these two electrons and become copper metal, which is also solid. So in time, this copper could either become big or you see that there are a lot of copper metals settling beneath this beaker. Where did this, those copper metals come from? They are already in the solution as copper two ions, no metals. Zinc metal loses electrons, and those electrons are accepted by the copper two ions in the solution to become neutral copper atoms. And the neutral copper atom is a metal. So it will either increase the size of this metal or they will settle down as copper metals in this compartment. So in compartment A, this first compartment, you realize electrons are being lost from the electrode or from the metal. And what did we say about the loss of electrons? Let me remind you, we said oil rig. Oxidation is loss. So this is the site of oxidation. This is the site of oxidation. So oxidation is occurring in this first compartment. Copper, two ions over here in this compartment in the aqueous solution are accepting two electrons to become copper metals. So they are gaining electrons. So reduction is gain, rig. So over here, what has happened is Reduction. 
when we started talking about galvanic or voltage cells, he said something that the site of oxidation in a galvanic cell, we have a name for it. Is it the anode or the cathode? Well, we also had a way of memorizing that one, right? And ox, red, cat. So anode, oxidation, reduction, cathode. So oxidation over here, this part will be called the anode. Red, cat, reduction, cathode. So reduction is occurring over here. So here becomes the cathode. You remember anions and cations? We learned that anions are negatively charged. Cations are positively charged. So over here, anode, you see an, like in anions, eh? So this part will be negatively charged. Cation, we hear cat over there. So here it will become positively charged. So the anode is negatively charged and it is where oxidation or loss of electrons occur. Reduction is the gain of electrons. And we call that part of the voltaic cell where reduction occurs, the cathode. And that part is positively charged. Now, we can combine these two equations to get the overall cell equation. And before we do that, um, I don't like it when we see negatives in chemical equations. I always prefer to see positives, eh? plus, this one plus that one. I don't want to be seeing this one minus that one. So I'm going to move this minus two electrons to the other side. So that we'll have zinc going to produce zinc two plus, plus two electrons. Now it makes a lot of sense to me right now, good. So let me combine these two equations because the number of electrons are the same. If the number of electrons were in the same, they would have multiplied any of the half equations by a factor such that the number of electrons would be the same. But today, our electrons are two electrons here, two electrons there, so we don't have any problem. So we can add the oxidation half cell equation and the reduction half cell equation together. Let's consider the reactants first. Eh? So overall, Overall equation. And the reactants are here, we have only zinc solid. Plus, over here, the reactants are copper two ions and two electrons. The product, over here, we have zinc two plus, plus two electrons. Then, over there, we have copper. That becomes our overall equation. But there are some things that are common to both sides of the equation. Don't confuse yourself. Zinc is different from zinc 2 plus because zinc is a metal. Zinc 2 plus is in aqueous solution. So don't think this one is the same as this one. No, this is plus two. This one has no charge, so they are two different things. In the same way, copper two is different from copper. But we have two electrons here, two electrons here. They are the same, eh? so they can cancel off. So the overall equation becomes zinc metal plus copper two ions in solution to produce zinc two ions in solution and copper metal. That becomes the overall equation for this voltaic cell. Well, at this point, let's look at something that is really happening in the two compartments. We realize that for every zinc two ions, we are supposed to have two nitrate ions. But as the cell keeps on operating, we have more of the zinc metal losing electrons to become zinc two plus ions. 
So with time, you can see that we have a pile of zinc 2 ions in the solution. Let's count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 zinc 2 ions. And each zinc 2 ion is supposed to be surrounded by 2 nitrate ions. So if we have 7 zinc 2 ions, we will need 14 nitrate ions. Now let's count and see. Eh? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The zinc 2 ions have increased in number, but the nitrate ions are still the same. So we have excess zinc 2 ions in this first compartment. Let's check the reduction compartment 2 and see. Now, before we started, we said each copper 2 ion is surrounded in the solution by two nitrate ions. Right now, what is happening? Most of the copper 2 ions over here have been converted into copper metal or copper atoms. So the copper 2 ions have now gone down. So let's count and see we have one copper 2 ion. Surrounded by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 nitrate ions. So you see there is imbalance over here in the two compartments. And if this thing occurs for a while, this whole cell or setup will stop working because the charges are not balanced. For the charges to be balanced in zinc nitrate used as an electrolyte, we have to get the ratio of zinc 2 ions to nitrate ions should be 1 is to 2. And now you're not getting that over here. The zinc 2 ions have become plenty over here. And over there too, they're supposed to get each copper ion surrounded by two uh, nitrate ions. But over here too, the copper 2 ions have reduced. So to account for that, that is where we have what we call the salt bridge. The salt bridge. Now, with the salt bridge, we have cotton at the edges like this. Then we have a salt here. The salt could be sodium nitrate, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, potassium nitrate. Any of them can be used as salt in our salt bridge. But since we are using the nitrates, huh, let's use potassium nitrate. Or we could also use sodium nitrate. I'm choosing to use um, potassium nitrate. Huh? So we have potassium nitrate, like this. Huh? Other potassium nitrate. Other potassium nitrate. Other potassium nitrate so what is going to happen over here accumulated positive ions over there we have accumulated negative ions so with the salt bridge we have to balance these positive ions and to balance them we need negative ions so what will happen is the nitrate ions which are negatively charged will now move towards this compartment so you have you have the nitrate ions moving towards our anode Because in our anode, we have excess positive charges. This part has excess zinc 2 ions. So we have excess positive charges over here. And the salt in the salt bridge is made up of positively charged and negatively charged species. So what will happen is, since we have positive charges built up over here, the negative charged particles will now move towards the anode. 
potassium nitrate. So potassium is positively charged and the nitrate is negatively charged. So the nitrate will start moving towards this compartment, which is the what? The anode. So imagine this nitrate, we have three of them moving here. One, two, three. What happens? Now let's count the number of nitrate ions over there. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten nitrate ions, right? Then there's in two ions. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you see, we are not increasing the nitrate ions. Eh? So we have to still add two more. So another nitrate ion, another nitrate ion. Such that the nitrate ions that will move from the salt bridge into the anode will balance the charges of the zinc. Since we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zinc two ions, we would then need how many nitrate ions to balance it out? 14. Meanwhile, we have only eight. So the six will then have to come from will then have to come from the salt bridge to balance the positive charges over here so that the cell can keep on operating. Over there at the cathode, we realize that the copper two ions have now reduced and we have a buildup of negative charges. NO3 minus over there. So what will happen? The potassium ions, the potassium ions, from the salt bridge will now move inside here to come and balance the nitrate ions. Do you see it? So that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nitrate ions. Then we have one copper two ion. So this one will take only two, remaining one, two, three, four, five, six. That are three. A buildup of negative charges. So when we get six potassium ions over here, the six potassium ions, each one will pick one nitrate ions and balance them. So the salt bridge completes the circuit, yes. It connects the two compartments together, true. And most importantly, it balances the charges in the two compartments, that is the anode and the cathode. That is the function of the salt bridge. So this is what really happens in a galvanic or voltaic cell. But remember, we are doing electrochemistry. So we are trying to relate chemical reactions to electricity. What is the link here? When zinc loses electrons, the electrons flow, flow through the wire to that part. Now, electricity is defined as the flow of electrons. So the flow of these electrons through the wire from the anode to the cathode is what is creating electricity. Remember, we didn't have to force this reaction. The moment we linked the two compartments together, there was just a struggle for electrons. Who loses, who gains? It was spontaneous. We didn't have to force it. And zinc willingly had to what? Deliver the electrons to copper. Now, that is what we call a reaction in a voltaic cell. It is spontaneous. The moment you connect the two compartments together, one of the electrodes begins to what? Lose electrons. Then the electrons will have to flow through the wire. And in the flowing of the electrons through the wire, electricity is generated or created. So this voltmeter would record the potential difference because electrons are flowing. 
electrons are flowing. Now that is a galvanic or a voltaic cell, and that is what really happens there. But we have a way we represent this whole equation, a shorthand, an abbreviation, and we call that the cell notation. How do we write the cell notation? I'm going to show you how we do it. I'll give you examples, and from the examples, I will leave you to look at this galvanic or voltaic cell and tell me its cell notation or its cell shorthand. So let's look at the cell notation. The cell notation is an abbreviation or a shorthand form of the chemical reactions in a voltaic or a galvanic cell. How do you write a shortcut? At the left side, you will write the anodic or the oxidation reaction. But are you going to write the whole reaction? No. You write just the reactant and the product. So the substance whose oxidation number increased, the substance that lost electrons. So what substance was that? And after losing the electrons, what did it become? That becomes the what? The oxidation. And you write that one on the left side. Then on the right, you write the reduction. Not the whole equation. But the substance that gained the electrons. Before gaining the electrons, what was that substance's identity? After gaining the electron, what did it become? That becomes the reduction part. But we have to separate the reactant from the product. So to separate the reactant from the product, we use a line, a vertical line. Then, to separate the reactant from the product, also in the reduction equation too, we separate the two with a line. But to separate the oxidation and the reduction half equations, we use two lines, two vertical lines. Now that two vertical lines represent the salt bridge. So let's look at an example. An example is Fe, Fe2 plus our salt bridge, Pb2 plus Pb. What it means is that at the reactant side, we have iron. And at the product side, this iron now becomes iron 2 plus. That's what it means. Now, we have lead 2 plus followed by lead solid, which means that the lead 2 plus will be a reactant because you always write a reactant first followed by a product. So, another reactant, eh? lead 2 plus. Then, over there, we have lead solid as. A product. So do you see how we we write the shorthand? Iron to iron two oxidation. So iron line iron two. That is the oxidation half equation. For the reduction half equation, we have lead two plus lead. So lead two plus lead. This is the reduction half equation. Then we separate the oxidation half equation from the reduction half equation using two lines. And these two lines we are saying represent the salt bridge. Now, there's another example over here. Tin, tin 2 plus. Salt bridge, silver plus silver. What we mean is, this tin is a reactant, and it's undergoing oxidation. So tin, uh, and at the product side, it now undergoes oxidation to become tin 2 
plus. Then, at the other side, or in the other compartment, in the reduction compartment, we have silver plus, which later became silver. Do you get it? So, let's go back to the galvanic cell we drew earlier on. And let's try and use the galvanic cell to write down the cell notation for the whole reaction. So, in our galvanic or voltaic cell, we realize that zinc solid lost two electrons to become zinc in solution, right? So, zinc underwent oxidation. It started as zinc solid and ended as zinc 2 plus. So we can write it simply as zinc solid, then became zinc 2 plus in solution. That is what happened over here. And this half cell is separated from this half cell. But they are joined together using a salt bridge. So my salt bridge. Then in that compartment over there, the reduction occurred. Reduction occurred there. And you can see from there that we started with copper two ions. Then the copper two ions gained two electrons to form copper solid copper. So this becomes the cell notation for this galvanic cell. Always remember, the oxidation half comes first, followed by the reduction half. In writing the cell notation for the oxidation half, you write the reactant first, followed by the product, and they are separated using a line, a line. In the reduction half equation two, we have the substance that was undergoing re, um, oxidation. This was at the reactant side. It gained electrons to become this one, which is at the product side. So this reactant and this product are separated using a line. This is the reduction half equation. This part is the reduction half equation. This part is the oxidation half equation. The two equations are separated using two lines. And we are saying those two lines represent the salt bridge. I hope now it's clear. What really happens in the galvanic or voltaic cell? We have two substances, and the cell is in operation. One will have to lose electrons, and one will have to just gain those two electrons and give it to eight ions in solution. The one that loses the electrons becomes the anode, the site of oxidation, because oxidation is the loss of electrons. And that part is negatively charged. The electrons pass through the wire, enters the other compartment. The ions in that solution move to accept those electrons and become neutral atoms. That is the site of reduction called cathode. And the cathode is positively charged. And we've said that as the cell keeps on operating, there is a buildup of positive charges in the anode and a buildup of negative charges in the cathode. And to make sure that buildup is ruled out, we have a salt bridge. The salt bridge will complete the circuit and also join the two compartments together. But most importantly, it will balance the charges in each compartment so that the cell can keep on operating. We also looked at how to write the cell notation. And we said that on the left-hand side, we have the oxidation half cell. 
On the right hand side, we have the reduction half cell. The oxidation and the reduction half cells are separated using two lines. And that two lines represent the salt bridge. In the oxidation half equation, the reactant and the product are separated using a line. Then in the reduction half equation, the reactant and the product are separated using a line. In every reaction, we start from the reactant side and move to the product side. So please, don't ever write the product before the reactant. No. Write the reactant first, followed by the product. I hope by now you've gotten this concept. In our next video, we'll be considering the standard hydrogen electrode and how it can be used to find the voltage when two cells are connected. Thank you.